The following is a world class bullshit is exclusive. You know, I bet that Star Wars Resistance trailer is going to do huge numbers, and people are going to realize that Star Wars is truly loved by all aspects of the fandom, no matter what they say about this small, vocal, toxic minority. I mean, just look at the numbers on YouTube. Oh, shit. So the trailer for Star Wars Resistance is out, and positivity is not a word that you can use to describe it. I saw it. It looks dumb. It looks very basic. It looks like it's for children. But there's just one problem, Disney. It's on Sundays at 10 p.m. Call me old-fashioned, but I think most kids would be in bed for school on Sunday nights at 10 p.m. So with that line of defense out of the way, why does Star Wars Resistance look so dumb? Well, it looks cheap. And I think cheap is not a word that people have associated with Star Wars historically. If we go back and we look at the Star Wars Clone Wars series from 2003, it's stylized, but not cheap. If anything, it's so stylized that it elevates very little dialogue, and it filled in a lot of holes between episodes 2 and 3. I personally hold the Clone Wars from 2003 in very high regard, much more so than the 2008 series, but I love them both. But Star Wars Resistance just feels forced and fake. Maybe all the clips come from one episode, but everything is just them on, like, an oil rig out in the middle of some water planet, and it looks boring. I mean, where's the outer space? Where are the alien planets? I mean, this is Star Wars. This isn't Jane Goodall with a documentary about gorillas or apes or whatever the hell she made. No, this is supposed to be high fantasy in a galaxy far, far away. But no, it looks like a racing drama on an oil rig out in the middle of nowhere. Kathleen Kennedy has finally achieved her goal to make Star Wars look like the world right outside of our window. Nothing grandiose, nothing epic, nothing fun, just some boring shit about an oil rig and some racing. Michael Bay, I hope that you're getting a check because this seems very reminiscent of Armageddon. Now the most interesting part about all of this isn't necessarily the content of the trailer, but the reaction of the trailer in the comments section. So as of this recording, the Disney YouTube channel has 3.1 million subscribers. This video has 823,000 and change, and the thumbs up to thumbs down ratio is 8,000 thumbs up, 36,000 thumbs down. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but that doesn't look too good in the favor of Disney proper. And when you search Star Wars Resistance trailer, there's just a whole shitload of videos of people tearing it apart. Like I said, it looks boring, it looks poorly made, poorly executed, and it makes you wonder, with the Clone Wars coming back, what is the purpose for this show to exist? It's on at night. Little kids aren't going to watch it. Yeah, they'll catch it in reruns and syndication and all that stuff. But what's the point? You keep telling the old fan base, we don't want you. We don't want your kind. You know, you have to wait outside while Star Wars gets woke. Well, we will wait outside while Star Wars gets woke, goes broke. And then, well, I could insert a Snoke joke, but I won't because I have self-respect. But my point is, this show doesn't need to exist. If anything, it should be a sizzle reel for an idea that'll never come to be. I mean, we live in a world where Star Wars 1313 isn't coming out, but this is. And those were just mandates. It wasn't like the technology wasn't far enough along for Star Wars 1313. It's not like there wasn't a demand for a Boba Fett video game set in the seedy underworld of Coruscant. No, we live in a world where some asshole executive made the decision to make this show and cancel Star Wars 1313. Now, speaking of this show... There are independently made fan projects like TIE Fighter, which is a fan film that looks 10 times better than this show. It has traditional animation, better effects, shows the humanity between the Empire and the Rebel Alliance. It's interesting. It has something to say as well as looking beautiful. But this just looks like a poorly conceived reboot of Reboot, you know, 23 years later. But what I was getting at with the comments section is people are just tearing this thing apart. I mean, check this out. These are the top rated comments on this video. So Fierce Deity Rick says, can't wait to not watch this. American Paisa says, another one bites the dust. WVU Benjasar says, it saddens me that this will be canon. Coriolan says, geez, this was not a well-made trailer. Dad Floppy Noodle says, I've got a bad feeling about this. A regular plumber says, Disney, scrap this and just continue Clone Wars. I don't want to pay for your streaming service just to watch that. Hmm. It seems like other people out there that aren't angry YouTubers, aren't hip to the idea of paying for a streaming service just to watch 12 old episodes that are being dusted off with a new shitty coat of paint that might have lead in it and paraded out in front of the world as new content for the Disney streaming service that's going to revolutionize the world. No, 
That's not going to happen, Disney. Wake up and smell your own bullshit. Cromwell the Conqueror says, At first I thought the reaction was because people hate Kathleen Kennedy. But no, this actually sucks. Get this video to a million dislikes, says Starlight15. We live in a world where that's a possibility, my friend. Sandrew1, 25,000 dislikes? I love democracy. You see, folks, when Disney announced that they were going to do all these Star Wars things, everyone on the internet got excited. There were nerd boners as far as the eye could see. There were wet soy panties. There were empty pie crates. There were all these things out there in the world that people were just excited for. They were turgid for the possibility of Star Wars every day for the rest of their goddamn lives. But now that we've seen the shit, no one cares anymore. I have never seen a quicker about face from a franchise fan base in history. They want to talk about us and call us toxic and all these terrible things. Well, guess what? We'll take our toxic money spent in asses elsewhere to another franchise, or we'll just wait on the sidelines to watch you destroy yourselves. And that's where Disney Star Wars is right now. You know what they say? Screw me once, shame on you. Screw me twice. Now there won't be a second time with Star Wars fans. Maybe their kids don't get into it either. They'll see the bright, fun colors. But then they'll watch these new Disney movies where they're dark and depressing and dour and drab. And no one likes being in them because it's just one depression fest after another. There's a reason why the news came out that Dave Filoni is only involved with this project in name only. This reeks of someone who doesn't understand Star Wars getting the rights or the license or having the ability to make something based on Star Wars. But all they ever saw was a portion of The Force Awakens and a bunch of cartoons from 20 years ago. It's like an executively made decision. Like, there's a boardroom of people, old people, that said, we need to make a new Star Wars cartoon. Well, what do kids like? Well, they like that droid. It looks like a soccer ball. Our target demographic's probably young boys, so we need to have a male character. And we also need somebody from the movie. So the kids are going to go and watch this show, potentially. And Poe Dameron, he looks so cool. He's so great. And then you watch him in a movie get emasculated for three hours by a purple-haired lady who's really mean and then blows up and dies. I don't think kids are going to pick up on that. Kids want a hero that they can look up to. The beauty of Spider-Man is the dichotomy between Peter Parker and Spider-Man. In the real world, Peter Parker is nothing. He gets beat down constantly, but he keeps on going. And then as Spider-Man, he gets to go out and be his true self. You know, action is his reward. He may not be rich. He may not be powerful, he may not have all kinds of friends and influence in society, but Spider-Man does, and that's his outlet, and that's how we feel as a fan base, satisfied in watching the content. We have a hero that we can root for. These new Star Wars characters don't have that. And it's funny that this thing is coming out now when people realize the truth, because at the same time that this trailer is coming out, we're hearing all kinds of rumors out there in the world that Kathleen Kennedy is being fired in September, that... They're not making an Obi-Wan film. That Ryan Johnson's trilogy is not coming out. There's just so many rumors out there all at once, kind of compounding and confirming what's going on. I won't be surprised if this is the last animated feature that Disney puts out from Star Wars. You had the Force for Diversity cartoon, and now you have this cartoon. And the Force for Diversity, I believe, was only on the website, and this is only on the Disney channel. So this is one of those Star Wars videos that I make where I don't even have to do the ripping apart of the Star Wars property, because guess what? Other people are doing it, and it's already showing that Star Wars Resistance is a failure before it even launches. And like I said earlier, to compound that, it comes on at 10 p.m. on Sunday nights. I can see Friday at 9, Saturday at 9, something like that where kids are going to be up. But no, your target demographic, these little kids that you tell us Star Wars is for, can't watch your show. So who's going to watch it on Sundays at 10? Ah, the old fan base that you don't want. So folks, remember, Star Wars isn't for kids, it's for everybody. Disney wants to tell you it's for kids so they can excuse stupid decisions. You know what, it's not even just Disney that wants to tell you that. It's online critics, online pundits, all these people that want to defend and deflect the garbage hurled at Lucasfilm for their bad creative decisions. Those are the people that will tell you Star Wars is for kids, but we know the truth. It's for everybody. It reaches you on so many levels at different points in your life. Now this show is definitely made with kids in mind, but there's so much competition out there for your child's mind. Star Wars can't capture their imaginations and keep them interested for more than two or three minutes. So that's where we are right now. I'd like to thank everyone who watched this video. Please make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it, like it, tell everyone about world-class bullshitters. We've had an incredible year. We just, just hit 70,000 subscribers right before I recorded this video. So today is a monumental date in the history of world-class bullshitters. And I'd like to thank everyone, everyone who's made it possible. So if you're out there and you've watched our videos, thank you very much. If you've watched them out of spite, well, thank you very much as well. If you're a big fan of this channel and you'd like to see us grow and do more stuff, join our Patreon page. A buck a month goes a long way. Five bucks, which is only 17 cents a day, goes even further. You get access to commentaries, world-class bullshitters after hours, which is the show after the show. 
all kinds of exclusive stuff. T-shirts, posters, digital posters, and the perks keep on getting better the higher you go up. But if you can't afford that, I understand. Just uh, hang out over here and tell everyone about World Class Bullshitters. Join our Facebook page. Get involved in the community that way. You can check out our fan art section. You can check out the memes. You can check out all kinds of great stuff over on World Class Bullshitters Facebook fan group. You know, when I make these videos, there's always a part of me that hopes that people will eventually see what I see and wake up to the Star Wars brand in 2018 for what it truly is. A soulless money grab. And the reactions to this trailer have proven me right. I don't make these videos saying, one day they'll see, one day they'll know I was right all along. No, I'm not looking for that. I'm just trying to open up people's eyes in a funny way. And now I'm so happy to know that it wasn't just me all along seeing this shit. So I'll be back tomorrow with Good Morning Pop Culture, and I'll be back later in the week with more videos like this. You guys requested it, you guys watched it, and guess what? Now they're happening. So if you want to see the single videos like this get released frequently, all you got to do is watch it and help the numbers get up. Because when I see high numbers, I know that the fans want it. And when I see what the fans want, I make it. My name isn't Kathleen Kennedy, and I do not hate my fan base. I appreciate them. So thank you for watching, and see you next time.